I want to say a massive thank you. You're doing an amazing, epic challenge and the money will make a huge difference. Um, I want to personally thank you as well. I've had cancer twice now. I wouldn't be here without people doing amazing research and we can't do that research without fantastic fundraisers like you. Hi, we've just reached the, the steep hill. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's been quite a long stretch, just past the King's Cross, we hang a left, but I'll be there. Cool, okay. Just because uh, yeah. there's nothing visible to show that you're moving. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the absolute legend in his lunchtime. The most organised military man I've ever met. How he conveys information to us as well. We knew exactly how far we had to run at what pace. Um, those, those were tough times and uh, for Franny. Really there. <laughs> This phone call came and there was some strange guy at the other end and, oh, hi, Darren, it's Francis Benali here. I wondered if I could talk to you about something. I've had this idea and I'm going to run a thousand miles in 20 odd days um, for cancer research and wondered if we could get together and have a meeting. All right, so we're off then. Hi. Good luck, cool. Franny. Yeah, thanks, mate. Have a good day, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> thanks, guys. See you later. It was uh, one afternoon and uh, I got a an invitation via email of Darren to attend a meeting with uh, the one and only Francis Benali. He went through what the details were um, and that he was after some support. Uh, Darren agreed straight away and threw me in at the deep end, which was a bit of a shocker, but um, yeah, we went ahead with it. Just want to say a massive good luck, Franny. You're going to be awesome. Keep running. Hi, Francis. It's James and Cam here from the telemarketing department at Forcom. What you're doing is absolutely amazing, so don't stop and keep going. You should be able to do it. Hi, it's the end of day one. Um, really tough day today. The, the, the mileage and that found difficult in my legs, and my legs are really sore and fatigued, but uh, I think that I felt worse this evening uh, whilst I'm getting some treatment at the moment um, was the nausea, you know, just felt sick. We'd be up before six o'clock in the morning, Franny would be up well before that, having some um, breakfast, getting his treatment. While that was going, there was vans to be loaded, you know, he even had his own mattress and bed taken into every hotel, that need packing into the vans. Generally at 7.30 start, a lot of the time we didn't make that and that was not down to Franny, it was down to us in the support team, perhaps uh, putting our makeup away. You can see it clearly leaves the yeah. main road, it's right. on a cycle yeah. path, it yeah. goes parallel to the railway. So there's your identifier, don't go, don't go across the railway, you need to drop down onto the cycle path. It's amazing the support the Forcom give, um, they don't just give the financial support, it's all the extra bits, so it's all the, you know, the fact that we're allowed to take two days off of work and come up and support him all the organisational stuff, that it's just been brilliant. It's been brilliant to be part of Falcon. Again, some, something like that. We'll make a note on You've that. got the bike with him, but again. Yeah. What a great guy. Just a really fantastic motivator. The most organised military man I've ever met. Um, yeah, what an amazing guy. You know, even though I'm not eating, it feels like the, just a, there's all sorts of rattling around in there, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, so that yeah. That constant... Yeah. Belching or sicky feeling. Hmm. Because the, there's nothing visible to show that you're moving. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I said about today. Today's going to be, you know, it's not the longest day, but possibly it's not the hilliest day, but it's probably mentally the, the, the hardest tough, day yeah, yeah. and the toughest. Yeah, yeah. So no, it has been so far. It's, it's yeah. Three and a half hours, isn't it? Yeah, for a bit of change of scenery and a bit. Right, well, you good? Yeah, we'll have to get going, mate. I don't know. Yeah. Listen. Dino was very military. That's, I guess, the best way to describe him. He was inspiring, amazing, just so in control of everything, knew where everything was. He was good fun to work with, but then when it had to be serious, it was like, right, now you need to step up to the mark and, you know, any couple of seconds added onto Fran was just a nightmare, so make sure you get it right sort of thing. I really felt kind of honoured and privileged to kind of be part of it. When uh, Dean Cartledge kind of asked for volunteers, I was very quick to volunteer. Logistically, there's none better than, than Dean in regard to how he organises it, how he conveys information to us as well. We knew exactly how far we had to run at what pace, where the feed stations were and where we were going to stop and, and all those things. So, um, yeah, he makes, makes it as pleasurable as it could from, uh, from running those miles. Go guys!
Dino is fantastic. Um, without Dino, I don't know where we'd be. He's totally on it. His army background obviously helps, gives us very strict instructions at very certain times, but it's been amazing and he's an absolute godsend on everything that we've been doing and we couldn't have done it without him. <laughs> Uh, well, I've done quite a lot with Dino in the past. He's really easy to work with, really understanding, so it was good to work with him. The closeness of the group. Um, we, we do know each other's habits and how we work and how, how to motivate each other. So, you know, and, and the way he's operating at the minute and, and getting through each day, um, really, really tough days and pretty unimaginable for people that have not seen it firsthand. Um, it's just an absolute, absolute credit to the book. Hi, we've just reached the, the steep hill the uh, North There was one day I drove some of the route, I, I drove half of the route just to, to sort of check everything was all fine, there was no obstructions, everything like that and for 20 miles I saw three people over some tough terrain, some very hilly terrain as well. We're now levelling off, about 10 miles to get crossing down to the other side before we start here. We still can't get complacent, Franny can't get complacent, the support team can't, but you know there is light at the end of the tunnel, we're nearly there. With an injury, with not enough fuel in the system, probably not enough fluid either. The thing is, what he's burning, we need to then put back into his body. He's not having an appetite where he's got no energy to have an appetite. He's not getting enough sleep where he's having long days. He's running longer than he's sleeping. Then he's got treatment either end of that. He doesn't fancy any food, he doesn't want water. Originally he was craving the electrolytes, now he doesn't want them. We just can't find something that he is happy to keep doing every day other than the running. I'm just just lucky that they made it back in one piece. And see what tomorrow brings, but I might have to just pack my bags. Don't have him take another day in London. See if it wasn't for him, I think he was the saviour of the day, to be honest. He really knew not only the maps um, of his directions where to go, but just always helping. He was sprinting at times to, to make sure Benali was all right. There was a, a situation under the canal, which I think Fran, uh, Franny will remember quite well, where it was me, Francis and Matt Letizier on our own, no support vehicles, going four miles down a canal and his knee locked up and we didn't know what to, obviously I panicked a bit because I was just like, right, okay. So I sprinted down the canal, tried to find someone and we found Dino. Dino was sprinting the other way around to try and get to him. So um, those type of things, you know, that um, they're the type of things that Dino does, you know, he just goes above and beyond just to help. And that day on the canal, as you said, that was one of those scenarios running fine yeah the, the the knee the pain in the knee just came from nowhere and I had to quite literally stop couldn't even take a step to walk let alone run at that stage and, and with a little bit of treatment when we eventually caught up with the support team further down the canal um, Kelly patched me up and uh, I was able to continue running it was just a case of sprinting back to where the support team were ahead of ahead of the main group grabbing the physio grabbing air kit and then running back along the canal in order to, to meet Franny and uh, give him some treatment uh, along the side of the canal. It was another one of them where, where the knee came on, where just a kind of concern where the support team couldn't be next to Franny all the time. But we needed you know, some, some form of support there in case of those things. It's always the case where if you're not next to him, something will happen. If you're next to him, you'll be fine. The start, he's very demanding. He's very, he just literally has everything um, according to plan from the very outset. He knew exactly what was happening and, and when. And we even got lost and he came we, from the middle of nowhere, came in, picked us up, put us back on track and off we go again. So he knew, he knew exactly what was going on at every single minute, so it was good. Yep, check. Yes. <laughs>
That's so we're at the end of day 12. How was it for you? I'm pleased it's the end of the day. Um, yeah, difficult one. Why don't cry? Just the, the support's been amazing. Uh, especially through the day and at the end. Just to, just to get you through it, you know. Uh. So you're feeling full up. But when we put you on the scales in the morning, you're losing weight. That's the finding factor is you're losing weight when we're putting you on the scales and you've still got another nine days to go or eight and a half days to go. Naughty Francis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's amazing. He just kept everyone's spirits high, especially Benali's. And he probably was exhausted himself, but still carries on going for everybody else. It's just, he's amazing. You can always rely on Dino when, when you hit rock bottom, he's there to lift you up and give you that lift you need. Yeah, brilliant stuff, mate. That's it for the yeah. day done. You've got glasses. Like... <laughs> 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 That's your morning morale. Well, he's always one for lifting spirits, cracking jokes, um, just ad hoc stuff as well. But his uh, daily diaries uh, in a Big Brother style were a bit of a favourite of mine. Dear one on Benali's run, that kind of thing. Nice to meet you. Dear 15 in Benali's big run house. And we've got some new contestants. And it's Ben. He is Ben. Right, let Dino, are we doing it? Right, watch this. However, if he does need doggy do, he's going to be evicted on his first day in Benali's big run house. But mainly it's kind of motivation, really. You know, I remember. A, Kind of vividly, kind of running out of kind of leather-headed uh, up a hill with with Franny, and we were kind of struggling to kind of get up this hill. We've been running for, for kind of quite a few miles, and then all of a sudden, out of a bus stop from nowhere, kind of jumped this crazy figure in a yellow hat and sunglasses, and tried to do this crazy chicken dance around us. And it just made me and Franny smile, and just made us kind of you know realise that we just had to go this extra kind of couple couple of miles. Dear 17 on Benali's big run house, Franny's getting interviewed in the car by Talksport. I'm well jealous, like. I saw Dino jump out of a, a bus shelter um, in front of Franny to kind of make him jump and also make a, all the team kind of laugh and stuff. Frank, hey boy, I oh. haven't seen you in these pants! Oh, the life out of me! He certainly lightened the mood there. Everyone was, you know, in really good spirits and uh, certainly when Franny was down, he just made him feel a lot better and obviously helped him along the way, which is great. Benali, big run, you know, big brother house, up daily updates were, were, were you know, so entertaining and amusing and uh, I think he even did a, an MTV Cribs version in one of the hotel rooms one night which again was hilarious but, you know, no one particular memory I don't think, it's just great value throughout. For the man himself, Fran, today sees you complete a thousand miles, 20 Premier League clubs, which is frightening. Round of applause. Got the full attention of St Mary's. 
I know that you've been flanked by your family, your support team. They are Team Benali. Give us a few words on them. Uh, how can you put it into words? Um, when, it, when it is exactly that, it's family. Um, and that says all, whether it's a football club family, my wife, my children, the support team, they, you know, they know what I mean to them and they mean to me and I, I love them dearly, absolutely love them dearly. And one more time, ladies and gentlemen, let's just recap the facts. A thousand miles, 21 days, a minimum of 40 miles a day, back to back. That is 36 marathons for Cancer Research UK. Round of applause for this guy. treatment I did get and the support um, on the road when it was quite literally I needed immediate attention there and then I, I, I received that. You know, I, I couldn't have had a better team or better individuals around me. It was, um, it was a real team effort and uh, Dino, Kelly, my family, everybody from Forcom played their part and, and played a huge part of the, uh, the success. We were soon on the case with the sat nav, realising that we'd gone wrong, uh, but we were very grateful for the repositioning. Uh, but he was brilliant on the run. All the work you did, Dino, absolutely superb. Well done, mate. You know, if there's a, if there's a challenge to be done in the future by me, uh, uh, you're definitely on the list, mate. It's going to be the first phone call, so so watch out. <laughs> Franny, at the beginning of that final day, I said to you in the morning that uh, the word hero was used too much in sporting circles and in 36 miles time you was going to be one. Well, you did the 36 miles, you got to St Mary's, took the applause. Uh, so from Darren, myself, all the staff here at Forcom, a massive well done, and it's been a real privilege to support you in this uh, challenge. Absolutely, totally proud for us to be involved in the whole thing. On behalf of Cancer Research UK, I really just cannot say thank you enough um, for this amazing challenge, which everybody said couldn't be done. Day eight in the Big Brother house. Things have been going terribly wrong since I've been away. 48 hours I've been away. They've been eating Kentucky Fried Chicken, Frankie and Benny's and Dunkin' Donuts and I'm not happy at the situation. Also, to boot, Kelly has been crashing the car and going the wrong way down the junction. It's all kicking off. There's going to be evictions. It's day 14 and we're going to Swansea. Tidy. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> Day 18 in the Banali's big run house. And some other guys are trying to chip in and get some news. I don't know who they are, like. In other news, I got lost for the first time on the trip. I don't know what that's all about, but I'm very disappointed in myself. Day 19 in the Banali's big run house. We've been to London to see the Queen. We went to Arsenal and we went to Tottenham like and then we went to West Ham and then we went to Chelsea and then we went to Crystal Palace and they were all great. 